Hello, it's J. Stephen Roberts from Real Crusades History. Show your support. Make a donation using the PayPal link in the About box. Today I'm going to talk to you about the sack of Constantinople. And it's not going to be the sack of Constantinople that took place in 1204 by the Crusaders, nor is it going to be the sack of 1453 by the Ottoman Turks. In fact, this is a sack that took place centuries before those, in 1081, and it was perpetrated by the Byzantines. Yes, in 1081, a Byzantine army sacked Constantinople. And who was leading that army? Well, it was Alexius I Comnenus, the famous emperor of the late 11th century, early 12th century, who revived the Byzantine Empire after pretty much a century of miserable, brutal, evil emperors who almost destroyed it following the death of Basil II in 1025. But yes, Alexius I Comnenus, the same emperor who wrote to Pope Urban II asking for aid against the violence of the Turks against Eastern Christians. Well, actually, Alexius himself perpetrated quite a bit of violence against Eastern Christians when he allowed his army to sack Constantinople in 1081. So I'm going to read to you a description of the sack of Constantinople written by the most favorable eyewitness to Alexius's career, his daughter, Anna Comnena, who wrote a biography of Alexius called The Alexiad. It's one of my favorite books of all time. It's a brilliantly written book. Anna is perhaps the oldest female historian on record, and she wrote this magnificent book about her father's reign to commemorate his brilliance, but she did not shy away from including the fact that her father led an army which sacked Constantinople in 1081. So let's read now and see what Anna had to say. It was Holy Thursday, the day on which we sacrifice our mystic Paschal Lamb and feast. In the fourth indiction, in the month of April, 6589, that is April 1st, 1081, in the Western Christian calendar. Thus, the whole army, composed of foreign and native troops, collected from the countryside round Constantinople and the neighboring districts, very quickly poured into the city through the Cherisian Gate. They knew the capital had for a long time been well stocked with all kinds of provisions, which were constantly replenished by land and sea. Once inside, they scattered in all directions, in the main streets, at crossroads and in alleyways, in their cruelty sparing neither houses nor churches, nor even the innermost sanctuaries. In fact, they gathered from them heaps of booty. They did refrain from murder, Anna says this, but the translator of this book uh, he includes a note that says, Zonaris, that's another Byzantine author, declares that there was killing. So, in fact, um, I think we can pretty safely assume that when Anna says they refrained from murder, they raped, pillaged, and sacked the city, but they didn't kill anybody. Uh, that's pretty obviously, I mean, she's trying to cover the horrific quality of this event that happened under her father's authority. And I'm going to continue reading from Anna. But all the other crimes were committed with complete and reckless disregard for decency. What was worse was the fact that even the native-born soldiers did not abstain from such excesses. They seemed to forget themselves, debasing their normal habits and unblushingly following the example of the barbarians. 
So that's Anna Kamnina's description of the sack of Constantinople in 1081. Now, to give some context for this event, Alexius I Kamnenis came to power as the Byzantine emperor through a coup. He overthrew the emperor who was in power at the time by gathering his own army and basically storming Constantinople. And he gathered this army from both Greek and non-Greek uh, people, uh, citizens, as well as non-citizens to the Byzantine Empire. Uh, there were going to probably be Turks and Franks and all kinds of people from West and East in this army. It's interesting that Anna says that even the Greeks went around sacking and brutalizing Constantinople. So what's my point in reading this? Um, I'm not reading this because I'm trying to say that Alexius Comnenus, or the Byzantines for that matter, were somehow uniquely guilty of sacking cities, even their own cities. I think that, you know, throughout the Middle Ages, we see horrific sacks of cities happening everywhere from, you know, the west to the east, all over the known world. We see this happening. But what's interesting to me is that this sack of Constantinople that happened in 1081, uh, quite a ways before the Fourth Crusade sacked Constantinople, is really unknown to history. And to an extent, I can understand that. This is Eastern history. This is not really a part of Western history. And Western history is kind of looms large in our imaginations today because the Western world is dominant. And the Fourth Crusade is a part of Western history, and therefore it kind of looms large. And, you know, the Fourth Crusade was a horrific event. Um, the behavior of the Crusader army in Constantinople was just horrific. They went around destroying, raping, pillaging, pretty much exactly like what Alexius' army did in 1081. It's just kind of funny that the Byzantines themselves almost laid <laughs> the blueprint for what the Crusaders would later do when they entered Constantinople in 1204. Every regime, well, I'm not going to say every regime, but any regime that is successful, that ends up producing positive results for the political entity, in this case we're discussing the Byzantine Empire, it produces good and bad for the people that it's ruling over. In the case of Alexius Comnenus, I think we can say, without question, he did a lot of good for the Byzantine world. His call for the First Crusade had a very positive effect on the Byzantine Empire. He was able to conquer a lot of Anatolia, which had been lost in the previous century. But, you know, there are things in his reign that are rather dark. And I would say the sack of Constantinople of 1081 is one of those events. Thank you.